This video is designed to discuss the call uh, reporting features that exist in Track Drive on version 2.1. At the time of this video, we do have our old reporting still hanging out there, which is down here. Um, eventually, we're just going to, for call reporting, we're going to have call logs, summary reports, and active calls. The rest are going to go away because we're, we've implemented this new call tracking feature or call reporting feature. So if I look at the old one, you can tell right away it's an old version because there's no columns to pick and filters. And Track Drive decided what you should see and not see, right? So these columns you couldn't change. On our new reporting, you have a lot of flexibility. So the, the immediate thing most people would look at is, well, I don't like these columns here. So I'm going to go ahead and go to columns, and I can just clear them off if I want to start over. So I just wipe them all out. There's no columns now, and then I say, okay, yeah. I want the actions so I can view the calls and listen to the recordings. I want the date the call started, when it ended, what direction the call was going, inbound or outbound, or if it's a agent conference call. So you will notice that it's in or out, but here's a conference call for the agent, these red ones here. Um, the agent gets on a single call using the track drive system for instant agent mode. We call them once in the morning, they stay on the phone all day, never hang up, and calls just come in and out of their conference. It's a really nice feature, and we track all that stuff for them. But I'm going to go ahead and do the status and whether I want to block or unblock. Probably need the from and to as well. <laughs> okay, so these are the important things. Um, the recording URL you would show if you want that to export because this is the recording button here to listen to the recording but if you export a call the actions don't export so what happens if you do have a the need to see the as you export the call recording exported as well it's a URL you would just put that on there so that that's here um, but anyway you pick all the columns but I'm gonna say that I'm only interested really in how my buyers are doing because I do all the stuff myself and I don't care if I you know what's going on with me as a traffic source so I'm gonna come down to the buyer fields and decide that what I want to see is the buyer in, in his ID and how much I made from him and if the call does convert okay so I've picked my own columns and I'll get rid of the columns here so that's very nice so now I have the report looking the report looking the way I like. I don't want the recording here. I'll just stick it at the end. Okay, so no problem. Oops, did I grab it? Okay, so there's the, the recording here. Okay, so now you can make the columns bigger or smaller as you need. So like this is buyer converted. Now I can stretch the column if I wish to make it bigger. Or I could have clicked on the little helper here and said auto fit. So auto fit this column. I can auto size all columns, which just do it for everything. So if things are too small, I can just auto size everything and things will fit. But it just made the buyer field really, really big. Now I have to scroll scroll left and right. Oops. I don't know how the buyer ID got over here. But I'll put it with the buyer fields. Okay, so you can see from my little demo here, I'm able to drag the columns around. I'm able to do whatever I want and make them bigger and smaller but you can now scroll left and right but my actions are going away and, and things that I like are going away so I can now come over here and say you know what I want to pin this to the left because I want to be able to get to the actions all the time so I can view the call and I can also listen to the recording so now when I scroll left and right that columns pinned now one really important thing about our system is that you're able to see us thinking so one of the very important things people always look at is they'll click on the eyeball to see what happened on the call so I can tell a bunch of information about the call the tokens we trapped these are the contact fields and the script the agent was looking at but one of the most important things for debugging track drive is trying to figure out what happened on a call that something went wrong and this call log section here is the most important part because we log the entire process of a thinking so it says the call uh, came in on this information went to this you know, we called that agent we didn't match some things so you know kind of you'll see everything that's going on so when you're trying to figure out what happened on a call it could be you're like why is this buyer never getting calls so you click on a call to view it and then you search for that buyer and realize oh he's not even being considered so oops I forgot to put him on the offer things like that this is also where you would say oh yeah the buyer should have converted on this 
the buyer shouldn't have converted on that. There probably wasn't a buyer on this call, that's why it graded it out. But when you have things, that's how you would also modify to unconvert buyers. All right, so back to our tables here. So showing you this, that's great. So now you can customize stuff. So it will remember this when I leave this report and come back to that report. I now still have my columns pinned and all the fields that I wanted on the screen in my view. Okay. Now the date picker is right here. So uh, some people don't realize that when it says today, uh, but by normally it's today. Um, so you don't realize that's a date picker. So I can come in here and do ranges. I can do whatever I want here. Okay. So I don't have any calls on my demo here. So that's why I was saying this month. Oh, that's last month. No, last month's fine. Okay, so that's some actions that you have here. Now, the other thing that you can have, not only can you pick the columns and size them right, and it remembers all that stuff, but you can do filters. Now, we have two ways to filter. My computer's heating up. Sorry, I closed all the doors and such. It's going a little slow. Um, but anyway, the um, I can name my tabs because there might be different reasons I'm trying to do things. So let's say my default one always shows me everything. And right here, I decide that I want to have another table, tab, that I'm going to call my student loan. All right, so now I've created a new tab, right? In here, I can then come to my filters and say that, you know what, I just want this to always be for the student loan consolidation, and I can pick another one and for new student loans. So now this is going to remember these filters on this table all the time. So when I close these filters down and then I'm moving on with life I now have uh, these stored. So when I move around the system and come back it remembers that on that tab. So I'm going to go back to the call log here And you can see here, when I switch to the student loans tab, it remembers those filters there. Okay, so if the filters are already there, it's because you did it over here. And you can see which things you have filtered as they show you a little icon here to tell you that you did indeed filter that column. So those are the things that go along with our new tables. Uh, when you do export, by the way, it will export in the same order that you see on the screen here and only the fields you have on the screen. So even though we have a billion fields that you could look at in this report, um, it will only export the ones that you've picked to be active. Um, so that's how our new reporting works and if you have any other questions contact support at trackdrive.net.